There's been many great champions in UFC history. Sean Strickland is not one of them. In last place, as much as I hate to say it, Sean Strickland. Although he just defeated one of the greatest middleweights ever in Israel, the last dog bender Adesanya, who's one and two in his last three. He was very one dimensional against Izzy. It was this jab, leg check, leg check, jab, 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 leg check. The only reason he even won that fight is because he was training with Izzy's daddy, Alex Bahera. Bahera really gave him the blueprint of how to beat Izzy. But I just can't see him getting past Drink This, Da Pussy, or even Robert Slobbert Whitaker. He had a modern day Rocky moment, but sadly that's all it was. Just a moment. I cannot see him being champion for very long. I really hope I'm wrong about this and he goes on to have a nice little title reign but he won't. Now on to number six, Sean O'Malley. O'Malley! Sean O'Malley has had a very smart career so far. He didn't get pushed to the top too quick, giving him plenty of time to develop. Also not taking too much CTE. But the ref gave him an early birthday present, that early stoppage against Aljo. That fight went to distance, or if they have a rematch, I cannot see O'Malley winning. Now I'm probably Sterling's only fan, but I cannot see O'Malley beating him twice, especially not in a row. And if it's Sterling's boyfriend, Marab, that gets the chance, I believe he will walk O'Malley like a dog. And at number five, the Alexander Pantoja. Pantoja easily dismantled my favorite fighter of all time, Brandon Marino. Being champion of the flyweight division takes incredible technique. Every one of those little shits has immaculate wrestling, stunning striking, and great jujitsu. The speed difference between a flyweight and a bantamweight is just night and day. They're so fast they make my stream lag. If Uncle Dana asks, by stream, I mean pay-per-view that I totally bought. The reason Pantoja isn't higher on this list is that he hasn't defended his belt yet. Can't see Figueredo beating him again at this age. If Moreno ever wants to get his belt back, he's to put down the damn Legos Maybe today. and level up as a fighter and get back to being the pride of Mexico again. On to number four. <sighs> Not this guy. Leon Edwards. Leon's the king of the toughest division and defeated the second greatest welterweight of all time. Hardy Snoozeman. Not once, but twice. Leon is also one of the least entertaining people I've seen in my entire young adult life. I would rather watch Izzy and his puppy sploosh than listen to a Leon Edwards interview. Tony highlights kicking Camaro so hard he turned white. I had to resort to poking the eye of the goat. Bilal! What's his name again? Mohammed. I don't want to bully my son too much. Okay. He really hasn't proved himself as a champion. Now on to number three, Jonathan Jones. I know what you're thinking. How is John Jones the GOAT not number one? This list isn't based off of these fighters in their prime. It's based off of them right now. To be honest, we don't know much about John Jones at heavyweight. Last time we seen him fight at all was back in 2020. That was at light heavyweight. No, he fought Gon, but was that even really a fight? I don't think Gon landed a single strike. Gon is not the prime version of himself. He's older, he's fatter, he's grosser. Not only this, but he's fighting in the weakest division in the whole UFC. I see John beating Stipe and then just retiring. I mean, there's no one left to challenge him. Unless Francis returns, he can't see Jonathan Boner Jones sticking around. If he drops light heavyweight, which I don't see happening, there's no one to fight there either. It's another weak division. Name another time in history where Jamal freaking Hill could be a champion. I'll wait. Luckily, the addition of Pereira will spice that division up. Even then, that won't be a close fight. Gonna out-wrestle and submit him by the end of the second round. The best champion, you also need the best title defenses. Can't count his time at light heavyweight either. But John can't be too high on this list. But he's still John Jones, so number three, Islam Makachev coming in at number two. I used to hate these Dagestani wrestler types, but I must respect them. And with Kumshat Chemaev, I started to really enjoy myself watching them. Though it's not what it used to be, lightweight is still a very tough division. He's one of the best active wrestlers in the whole UFC. Also, not afraid to stand and bang. And submitted the best BJJ player in the whole UFC, Charles Oliveira. Can't really see any current lightweight beating him anytime soon. The toughest fight of his career was against Volk, who's a division lighter. The rematch that fight is really the only loss I could see coming his way anytime soon. He's like Khabib, but he can actually strike and just hump his opponents like Baby Alien did to that OnlyFans girl. And at number one, the reigning, defending UFC featherweight champion of the world, Alexander Volkanovsky. There's no other fighter that bullied his division so bad he had to move up just to get a fair fight. He ran through everybody like a at a summer camp. He was debatably a few key moments from being a double champ. I'd say it's time we start calling him what he is, the greatest featherweight of all time. Can't wait to see him fulfill his destiny and slay Islam, become a double champ. Only moved up a division, but gave him the hardest fight of his entire career. So he has the most title defenses out of any champion on this list. Why in the LSFC's opinion, the greatest champion in the UFC. My list, my opinion, and I'm right. Hear your opinion in the comments below. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 you forgot about the most important part. What about the female champions? I'll be honest, I completely forgot there was women in the UFC. If you want us to make a video ranking the women's divisions, let us know in the comments below. Just let Dom make that video because he loves women in MMA. The biggest crush on Chris Cyborg growing up. On the other hand, I usually use that time to make some pizza roll, walk my dog, drown my little goldfish, if you know what I mean. And if you want to see less videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the LSFC YouTube channel.